What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, what could it be that's hiding in here for me? What's in the box? What's in the box? Is this a model kit or what's in here for me? What's in the box? What's in the box? How hard is it to put together? Is it made of leather? Hey, what's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today's episode of What's in the Box was filmed right here at Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of What's in the Box and today we have the Games Workshop Majorite Throne. This is a pretty small model as you can see the box is the size of my hand. Um, now let's open this up and see the contents of the box. So I'm using my pocket knife from Scouts in the 1980s. Anyway, okay, there's a flap here, just so you know. Check it open like that. Now this is such a small kit that it actually does not have any instructions in the box, as you can see. Because, I mean, it's straightforward. No trouble putting this together. Now I got these for our upcoming September tournament. That's going to be held on September the 16th, 2017, right here at Monster Hobbies. I hope you guys can make it out. We will be playing in the realm of Shish, which is the realm of death. So anyway, that'll be fun. So here's the base, and you can see the wonderful detail in here. But even the stones have nice little triangles. <laughs> it's like his tubes. Anyway, he's got worms in his tubes. So you get these little skulls. Ah, uh, break my wrist. So the skulls would go there on your Mage Right Throne. And then these are the dragons. And there, that's what it would be like put together. Okay, and then you get this nice pleated seat on the throne. And this would be the part that's the front of the throne, with those skulls there. And then you get your throne sides. You can see the detail. And of course, the back of the throne. That's the back back of the throne. And there's where your seat would go. Right there. So as you can see, I mean, this is very straightforward, but that's good because I actually have to build eight of these, one for each table in our gaming tables, because we'll have enough room for 16 people. That's eight at each table. Sorry, two guys at each table, eight tables, eight times two. I mean, there's your throne right there. Just put that together. Get out your glue and put it there. <laughs> I thought I'd come back at the end of the video for the Majorite Throne to actually show you what this does and what we're going to be using it in our upcoming tournament. So we open up our scenery book. These are all the PDFs. I think they're still in Games Workshop. But um, you can find them there, hopefully, and if not, I've got them here, and I'll be using them to uh, in our game. So here we go, the Mage Right Throne. Now this is what this thing does. Dig it! <laughs> a Mage Right Throne consists of a single model, constructed in an ancient time by powerful and insane wizards. These mighty edifices are highly sought after. Atop a pillar of stone skulls sits a throne of power. Now they drop the stone skulls, unfortunately. Anyway, 
a warlord who takes the throne can use the magic Im imdu imbued within it to wreak wrath and ruin upon his enemies. Scenery rules. The following rules are used for this scenery. Do not roll on the scenery table on the Warhammer Age of Sigmar rule sheet. Major right throne. Ascend to the throne. If your general or a hero from your army... Can everybody read this? <laughs> ...is on the top level of the Mage Wraith throne in your hero phase, they can sit upon the throne where they will remain seated until they move for any reason. While the model is seated upon the throne, they gain the following powers. Uh, throne of Command. If your general is seated on a Mage Wraith throne, all other heroes from your army can use the command ability listed on their war scroll if they are within five, 15 inches of the Mage Wright throne in your hero phase, even though they are not your general. So that's pretty cool. Mage Wrath. Subtract two from any casting rolls made for enemy wizards within 15 inches of the Mage Wrath throne. Wrath and Ruin. If a model from your army is seated upon the throne in your hero phase, roll a dice. On a roll of two or more, they gaze imperiously at the enemy with unit within 15 inches, unleashing the throne's dread power. That unit suffers D3 mortal wounds as warriors collapse to the ground, their ears bleeding and their limbs shuddering. On a roll of one, the seated model is judged unworthy and is racked with the same agonizing spasms, suffering D3 mortal wounds. So this really goes either way. So if you've got your warrior guy sitting on the throne, <laughs> Uh, don't forget to wash your hands after. Um, anyway, <laughs> if he's sitting on the throne, he can actually kill himself if he doesn't do it right. You roll d3 mortal wounds and you get a 3, and most heroes have 5 wounds, so do that twice and he's gone. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed our review of the Mage Right Throne, and we will look forward to seeing you at our tournament September 16th, 2017. Have a good one!